Hello, hello, Essential Stencil friends. This is Grace over here at the Comfy Nest with Grace, and I'm getting ready to do a fall project. I'm going back to the vintage truck, folks. Um, this is the project I'm going to use today, or the stencil, I mean. It's called Fall Vintage Truck Set, and I'll show you what you get with it. You get two things, and I, I come back to these again and again, even throughout the whole year, because um, this set has this awesome welcome to our patch, and the welcome um, I've used again and again, even outside of the fall season. And then the other one I am going to use today, I'm going to use the truck from this one. Um, you'll see these are what these are 12 by 16 is the size of these. But the truck itself, um, I'm going to work on a 9 by 12 canvas and the truck is going to fit perfectly on there. And then I'm going to use the word welcome above it. So we're going to make a little welcome sign. Uh, it'd be great for a front porch, a front door. You could hang this on top of your fall wreath. Um, if you have a nice, big, beautiful, lush wreath, you could um, hang this on top. The first thing I need to do, so I'm just going to get started right away, is to paint the background of my canvas. This is a standard 9 by 12 canvas. I got this, uh, I think I actually ordered like 15 of them. It was like a bulk pack, 12 or 15 of them off of Amazon um, during COVID. You know, I don't live anywhere near any of the big um, hobby stores anyway. Um, so I just ordered a bunch of them uh, with workshops and kits in mind from my, from my um, page, The Comfy Nest. So that's where I got them. This is it's a really old vat, I call it a vat, of paint from Annie Sloan. It's Annie Sloan Duck Egg Blue. I'm a huge fan of this color, you guys know that. I'm going to just paint the background with this color and then I think I'm going to either blend in or do something else on here um, just to make it, I, I, like, I don't like solid paint colors for a background. I like to add a little variety, um, sometimes a little texture. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this all covered up with paint. Now, listen, you guys, a couple of things. Um, three, there'll be three gift, I call them gift aways, giveaways during the live broadcast. So Essential Stencil at the end of the live broadcast will choose three people to, ran they'll randomly choose from the comments. So that means make sure you say hello. Make sure you, at the very least, you let us know that you're here so that you have a chance to win um, by saying hello or tell us, telling us where you're coming in from. Uh, let us know if you've stenciled before or if you're new to the art of stenciling. Are you new to the Essential Stencil page? You can tell us whatever your little heart desires. Tell us your weather. Um, tell us, you know, are you looking forward to fall decor? Have you started fall decor yet? Doesn't really matter. They're going to randomly choose from the comments. So make sure that you say something and say something nice and positive. <laughs> We'd love to know who you are if you're out there watching. So it's always good to hear all those like details of where you're coming from or how you, how new you are to stenciling, those kinds of things. So that's the first thing. Now, if you're catching the replay, you guys, if you're catching the replay within 24 hours after this live broadcast airs, um, Essential Stencil gives another set of stencils away to one of those folks. So if you're catching the replay, same thing applies. Make sure that you comment. This time you want to comment with the word replay. That way they know that you're one of the replay watchers. It'll make your comments stand out. And then they're going to choose one of those folks to win a set of stencils too. Isn't that phenomenal? I, they don't let us know. I'm, you know, as a brand ambassador, there's several of us who come on and do live demos for you guys. Um, they don't let us know what they're giving away. So I can't, I don't know. I don't know what you'll get in the mail, but I promise you, um, it'll be fabulous. I promise you, if you haven't worked with these stencils before, uh, they're fabulous. They're really thick and sturdy, easy to clean, easy to work with, great designs, a lot of classic, a lot of trendy. There's, they come out with new designs every couple of months. So there's always something new um, and exciting to look at and consider for your home decor gift giving projects. Um, and for those of you who are regular Essential Stencil fans, it would be great to hear from you too. Like what are the features, if you were to talk to these newbies, these folks who are new here, what are the features that you love? Go ahead and tell them in the comments um, how long you've been stenciling with Essential Stencils and what you love about them. Coffee break. <laughs> okay, so I've got this basic duck egg blue on the back of my canvas. It looks just 
fine on its own. But you guys, I just don't know why. I'm not a huge fan of um, backgrounds that are just one dimensional like that. So I was thinking about using my palette knife and maybe a metallic. I, I'm, I'm thinking because I'm using the vintage truck, I like to work in a metallic color that looks a little bit like rust. And I did this a few weeks ago. Oh gosh, it was probably a couple of months ago now. And it worked out great. I'm just going to grab, I got this, you guys, at a thrift store. I get, they had three of them. Huge. They, they, it's just so big. How many? This is an eight ounce bottle. Um, it was 50 cents and there were three different color metallics. So I think I'm going to try to work a little bit of this um, onto my canvas. And what I haven't decided is, so there are two things to think about when you want to add some variety or dimension to your background. If you want the colors to blend together, you're going to add your second color while the first color is wet. So that would be now. If you want it to sit on top of the other color and be very distinctive, um, you would want to wait for this base coat to dry. I haven't decided. I think I'm just going to dry it a little bit so it's not so wet. That way I don't have so much movement of my paint. Um, and then I'll take it from there. I can always, we can, paint is so forgiving, you guys. So don't ever stress yourself out about paint because you can always change your mind and adjust things. I had a little paint booger on my paint, paint job there. So I just took it off. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush so that, hold on, hold on. I'm going to add a little water to my brush so that this blends a little better because now where I took the, you can see a little mark there where I took off that paint booger. That's what I call them, those little chunks of paint. So I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit. This is another reason why, you guys, I don't love um, one-dimensional paint colors for the background. It's nearly impossible to get it perfect, right? It's nearly <laughs> impossible for me anyway. I don't know, maybe you guys don't struggle as much as I do, but for me, it's nearly impossible to get it perfect without any brush strokes or um, like this part's thicker than that part, that kind of thing. So it's just easier for me to make it look, and I think it looks more natural when it has other colors or dimension to it with texture, things like that. Okay, now that I've fixed that, I can go back to drying this a little bit. I think I'm gonna just palette knife some of that metallic on there and you'll see how, I'm gonna do it in kind of a cross patch pattern. I think you'll see it and hopefully you'll pick up on a new technique for yourself. I got another paint bugger. This is the thing about having old paint. Look at the top of my jar, how crusty it is. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I used to buy the really big quarts of paint. I have a ton of them still. Years ago, like almost 10 years ago, I still have paint left. I really prefer the much smaller bottles because that means you'll always have fresh paint on hand because you go through them more quickly. It's just me. I mean, you do you. These are easier to store too, because you can put them in little bins. I don't know, that's just me. All right, so let me tell you something. If you haven't picked up on it yet, this is a recorded video <laughs> that is being um, aired live at my regular broadcast time for Essential Stencil. Um, I'm not I'm not available. Eight, eight o'clock on Thursday night was my, was my time to be scheduled, and that um, just wasn't gonna work for me and my family, so. I recorded this video early um, and we I submitted it so that we could play it for you tonight at 8, 8 p.m. And my goal is to be able to jump on here with you guys and be commenting alongside with you. So I, so I may be able to get to the computer and be live with you, but I certainly couldn't um, bring all of this stuff with me where I was going. So. That's why we did it that way. So you guys, um, next up, so it's mostly dry. It's not completely dry. You can see a couple of darker spots there. Not completely dry, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this paint and I'm actually, again, I'm a huge fan of smaller bottles and I love the flip top option um, because it just makes it easier uh, to work with your paint. I usually use tin foil, so don't, like all of you who know me are gonna be like, what, wait, what, she's using? A styrofoam plate. I bought these for a workshop, gosh, a long time ago, a face-to-face -face workshop that I did a couple of years ago. And I found them the other day. I'm like, I still have plates on hand. So I'm going to try to use them up. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this paint. And this paint is not a brand I, I don't even know where you get this. Maybe at the hobby stores. Um, it's nice and thick, you guys. 
It says non-toxic non -toxic permanent finish water reducible. Uh, clean with soap and water before it's dry to clean it up. It's an acrylic paint, but it's nice and thick. Look at the way it like it's sitting inside. Now ignore the blue, that was from the other day. And I'm super frugal, so I'm just gonna use this over again. See how it's sitting there? It's not dripping at all. The paint just sits so nicely. It's great for stenciling, actually. I'm gonna scrape this on here and create um, like a different, and kind of it's gonna give it a little texture, a different look to the background. So from super plain, we're gonna just scrape this on, not in any, um, it, it's gonna be abstract. It's not gonna be in any particular order or um, shape. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add something on here to make it look a little different. And you could do this, you don't have to use a palette knife. You could use, um, recently I used a scrunched up napkin and got like more of a um, stippled texture. I like the way this looks, you guys, on a background. And I love to do it with a metallic. I really love to do it with a metallic. So I'm just gonna, like I said, I've got very, very little on the knife here and I'm just using the knife to scrape some color Maybe if I hold it this way, it'll be easier for you guys to see. Just to scrape some color on here on the background. That's all, it's just a simple way to do it. If you wanna focus on your edges. Um, this, this, I was thinking that this would be really cute and I'm gonna attach a hanger to the back of it. Um, of course, these, not, these panels, these thin panels can be framed easily, but I like them, I like them, they're kind of shabby and when they're hanging on their own, I do like them that way too. So I don't know, has anybody, do you guys do that? Do you ever use these panels to create things that you want? And then they're just inexpensive and easy to hang, easy to frame if you want to frame them, but you can also, um, you can also just hang them on their own. And that's what my plan was today. So look at what I got going here so far. It's just a little bit. See, it just adds a little bit of texture and um, interest to it. I like it the way it is. I think, I think I'm just gonna do a little more in the center. This is where the welcome will hang. So I do think of that too as I'm going like the truck will be back here and the truck will cover most of this. Um, but up in the area where the welcome will be, that'll be kind of look cool looking. And you could rearrange it if you wanted more, since I have more of that metallic on there on this end, you could make that your top. I'm going to make that my bottom. So we're going to get started with stenciling. Let me grab my stencil brushes. I'm going to do the truck first. So let me grab that truck. Um, and I'll grab my stencil brushes and we'll get going. So I have something really, really cool planned for this truck. Something different. Oh gosh, cross your fingers. I hope it goes well. I hope it works. Um, but I'm going to start with, oh no, I want this. There's four sizes in these. Let me grab them all. These are the essential stencil brushes and they come in four sizes. And you can see even the heads are um, different sizes. So I'm going to use one of the middle ones. There's a three quarter and a five eighths. I'm going to use one of these. And I want to, I, I think I am going to tape off some of this truck because I'm gonna do the tires black and I'm gonna make the truck itself like a really neutral color. So let me grab some painter's tape and just tape off a little bit of this. Um, and once I get that done, I'll show it to you. The other, the nice thing about taping some stuff off, it also will hold your, the stencil is, um, bigger than my my board, right? So it's hanging over on the edges. I can't tape it on the edges and let it stay down on the on the panel, but I could use the other parts of the stencil to hold it down on my canvas. I can use the other parts. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, right here, I'll show you this in a second, guys. Let me just get the painter's tape applied. Where the truck bed is, um, it, where the pumpkins are sitting on the truck, I'm just trying to think of how I want to do this because see where I have this line of tape right here? 
the pumpkins that sit on top, there's another piece, like a ledge. Let me get a better, ah, better grip of this. There's another ledge to the truck bed that goes across the pumpkins. And I would like to not have to worry about that ledge. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to think through. Like, can I, I think I can paint these pumpkins all orange and just like make that top ledge disappear. I think that's my goal. Um, but so I taped off the wrong thing. I that's what I was focusing on as I was talking to you. But I'm gonna tape off the pumpkins, I'll worry about that ledge later. I'm gonna get the rest of the um truck painted. I'm gonna go with a neutral. I'm either thinking this is um the color mineral from Waverly or melted chocolate. You'll see, I, I have this really cool thing planned. I think I'll go with mineral. Um, it coordinates anyway with the duck egg. I love duck egg. I think it goes with everything actually. it's Even though it's a blue, I feel like it's a really neutral blue. This is another, even these things of paint. This one is really, really old too because how much paint can you use, girls? So it's pretty thick. I've added a little water to it yesterday um, just to get it ready. I'm gonna grab and I'm actually gonna use this palette knife. It still has a little bit of metallic on it. I don't mind that because I'm gonna add some metallics to the um, truck anyway when I'm all done because I add that little bit of copper metallic and it makes it look like rust spots on your truck, which I think is very cool. So I put my little bit of mineral paint right on top of that metallic. It doesn't bother me in the least, so I have a bunch. I call that the little store of where I'm gonna get my paint. I'm gonna grab my paint get it into my brush and you can see how it's gobbed on there that's way 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 too much so I need to have a place to offload so I'm going to come up here in this clean section and I'm going to offload by doing little circles and working that paint up into the bristles so that your bristles look dry again okay that's that's what we're going for when we're stenciling you want a really dry brush when you go in on your stencil now um I'm gonna show you really quick too. Look at how much of my metallic is going to get covered. Like look inside the truck stencil, all of that's gonna get covered. So when you were looking at me putting that metallic on and going, whoa, that's a lot. I know it looks shocking, but I knew that a lot of that was gonna get covered by the truck anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start adding my paint and I'm holding down with my fingers, I'm holding down the little, um, and I'll show you here in a second, the little tiny sections that make the details of the truck. I'm holding them down with my fingers so that they stay still and stay in place. They're really, really thin. And I'll, again, I'll show you that in a second. I'm gonna offload a little more there. But first, let me just get a little application of paint on here. And I actually love um, when I'm stenciling and I'm looking at my project, I really like reimagining like how we can add something more to this project to make it a little different, to make it stand out. Um, you can, of course, you can stencil everything one color or you can individually take things off and do like a different color like I'm going to do for the tires are going to be a different color than the bed of the truck, right? So... I love when I'm stenciling, I love to like look at it and kind of reimagine how can I make this look different and either have some texture or have something different about it um, that you that you wouldn't get if you just went in with a one one layer of paint. I love dimension, I guess is the way to say it. So try to think of something that I that I can do to add um, a different perspective to this truck. So look, I will hold it up and show you real quick. I gotta get a good hold of it. So the challenge is that the, trend, the, the stencil is bigger than the board. Okay, so so far you can see where I have stenciled already up here at the front of the truck. These little, little, little skinny, skinny sections of the stencil that give you the detail of the fenders um, they're really, really thin. 
And so they come up off the border, as a matter of fact. I must have bent this once when I was drying it. So that's what I, that's the piece that I was holding down with my finger so that I wouldn't lose that detail, okay? So yeah, my fingers get paint on them. It's okay, it's all good. <laughs> We're just gonna keep forging ahead. Um, I'm gonna do something really different to this that you're gonna find, I hope you find really interesting, a new technique or a new way to enjoy your stencils, okay? I think it's not something I've ever done before. Maybe, I don't know if some of the other ambassadors have done this before, but you'll see, it's gonna all come together in the end. So it is better if you have like a light coat and you wanna um, darken it up a little bit, it's better to go in and add a second dry coat than to go in and add gobs and gobs of paint the first time because gobs of paint wet paint are going to give you it's going to give you bleed through and that's what you're trying to avoid okay i'm coming in on this back end now i'm going to get this part done this is giving me the basic shape the basic color of my truck and this is the paint is called is by waverly and it's called mineral I'm going this way a lot, which is how the, the track on the top of the truck is and how the fender is kind of shaped that way. So you can see I, I do move my brush around a lot in different directions and I'm really just following the lines of the stencil, always with a very dry brush, still always with a very dry brush. Now I'm gonna do the tires black, so I got a little bit of the truck color on the tires doesn't matter, the black paint's gonna cover that. So I don't have to necessarily tape off all of the tires. I just put the tape here to hold the stencil in place more than anything. That was my goal there. All right, I'm almost done with this part. And I can see a little bit of that metallic coming through because this Waverly um, mineral is a really, um, it's not as dark, it's not as strong a color as that metallic. So I'm just gonna hold this up so you can see what I've got going so far. It's just the base color of my truck so far. And because I can, I, I did a really light coat, I can see in some places where the metallic is coming through, but it's okay, because remember, I said I was gonna add a little bit of that metallic in the end to my truck to show some um, rust on it because usually these old vintage trucks they're not they're not always in mint condition right sometimes you see one that way that has been restored most of the time they're not in mint condition they have rust they have wear and tear they have dents all sorts of things right we have one in a field a little bit um, close to our neighborhood we were walking one day and i'm like oh my gosh look at that vintage truck all rusted out like totally rusted out just sitting in these high, the high grass, you know, the tall grass. Nobody goes over there in that field, so it doesn't get mowed. It's not being used. And we looked at it, and somebody had shot it up. So it had bullet holes. I don't know what somebody was thinking, but somebody had shot, used it like for target practice. So it was a mess, but it was still really cool to look at. I said to my husband, that would make some seriously cool, like, photo backdrop for family photos or something. All right. I've got the back of it done. I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. I'm gonna work on the tires. That's gonna give the body a little more time to dry. And then once I'm done with the tires, I'll be able to see if I need to add more to the body of the truck. Um, I gotta grab, I thought I did, but I, I didn't grab some black paint. So let me do that. I'm gonna grab, I have a, oh, I thought I had a big one. I might be out. Did I run out of Waverly Black? in my big, huge, <laughs> I had a big vat of it. I have, um, I want you to hear something. Listen, can you hear that? Apple barrel, it's too thin. I always feel like this paint, it, it's just too thin for stenciling. Um, that kind of liquid texture uh, makes it easier to have bleed through. It really works against your goal of avoiding bleed through. So I'm looking for my Waverly, in black and I can't find it. You guys, I, mean, I, I thought I had pulled it as, oh, here it is. I found it. I was using it for a different project. Here it is. So listen, this is my Waverly. Can't hear a darn thing. It's like stuck to the sides. It's so thick. That's what we want. We want thick paint when we do stenciling. Um, 
and this is you it's so hard for you to see you can't even see in there because it's so black um it's there's not a lot left in there it's there's about this much left okay i'm gonna grab one of the smallest and this is not an essential stencil brush oh, that's not even the right one i'm gonna grab one of this this is my go-to like little detail stencil brush i got it somebody asked me a couple of weeks ago where did i get it i think i just got it at walmart they had it at one point. It does not have a brand name on it, so I can't even give you a brand name. So I'm sorry for that, but it's gonna be the same process. Let me put this paintbrush somewhere where I'm not gonna make a mess. Same process. I've got the paint here. I'm gonna come into a, I call it the land of offload, and I'm gonna work that paint into my bristles and off of, off of the tips of those bristles, and now I can come in and do this black and I have a lot of control because it's just a tiny little brush. And I'm gonna stipple, I'm gonna go up and down to give these tires. And this, this is probably, this color is called Ink by Waverly. It's probably a little bit too black to be honest with you. Um, because you know, old tires like this, usually the rub, they don't have new, our old cars like this don't normally have new tires on them. They normally have really worn out rubber tires and, and you know, they get faded in the sun. So I may have to doctor that up a little bit when I'm done. I have to take my painter's tape off at some point. It's holding my stencil down, but I've got to get to that tire. So I'm going to peel that off and I'm going to do this tire. So tires are funny now because, and I was just thinking to myself, part of this is supposed to be white. And I'll add it at the end. I'll add some white detail to these tires. Um, don't let me forget to do that. I'd ask you guys live normally to say, hey, don't let me forget to do that, but you're not live with me. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to be live with you, but in the comments, not, not as I'm working. Okay, that one's done. You can see, um, even like, look, I'm still getting a lot of paint off this brush, even though it is so dry looking. Um, so you don't need a ton of paint when you're stenciling. You just don't. If you become a huge fan of stenciling, you don't need a huge paint collection, unless I suppose you're painting furniture and really big things. If your habit is to do really big projects, big like 18 by 24s, you would need more paint. But if you're doing eight by 10s, nine by 12s, um, if you're painting on jars and just little, if you're doing little projects, seriously, you do not need that much paint. This, even these small, are they two ounces? Yeah, two ounce jars. Even those will last you a very long time if you're getting into stenciling as a hobby. So don't be tempted to buy the big ones. You just don't need it. Okay, got that tire done. So my tires are done. The base of my truck is done. I want to add a little bit more paint to the base of my truck. Um, I, I can see where there's some metallic showing through. So I'm going to grab the paintbrush that has that color on it. I've got my plate here with my land to offload. I'm coming in, same process, offloading much of that paint, making sure it works its way into the bristles. Get extra paint off my fingers. And now where it's really dark, um, I'm just gonna add a little more of that, where the, where the metallic is coming through is what I mean. Where the metallic is really dark, I'm gonna come through and add a little more. Although these could be the places where I add my, um, where I put my rust. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. There was just a couple of places I wanna cover a little more. Now my pumpkins, I need to get my to my pumpkins and paint them. I'm gonna come in and just give this a little dry. And then you're gonna see, I'm gonna do something very different to this truck um, after I take the stencil off of it. And I'll explain to you how I did it. But it's gonna give us a, like a very unique way to use our stencils. Anybody here a fan of animal print? I, you know, I don't like, like, I don't wear animal print clothing, but in home decor, like an animal print pillow, my, my house style is very industrial farmhouse, but every once in a while to throw something like that in, I think not all over the place, but I do like it like just here or there to just have a little bit of it. Um, I'm going to do some animal print. Okay. I'm pulling off. 
the tape off of my pumpkins and I'm just gonna place it down on my truck to hold, again, to hold the stencil in place. I put it right over my truck. I don't think it's gonna bother the paint job. We'll see in a minute when I pull it back off. I need to get some orange for my um, pumpkins and I, I don't like my pumpkins to just, again, it's just like my background. I don't like pure color, like just pure plain orange, right? We're gonna add some we're going to add a little bit of brown in with it, I think. I may be able to use the paint color that I used on the truck to soften up the color. I'll hold this up and show you. So here's the little bit of orange that I got out right here. I think I'm going to add a little bit of this color to it. Um, and I still have some black. I'm going to use that same little brush and I still have some black on there. So I'm just, I'm grabbing some of the orange and I'm like I normally do. I'm coming into it like the world of offload. It's still too dark. Look, I grabbed some orange and I just had a little bit of black, but look at how dark it is still. It's too dark. So I'm going to come in. I have a little bucket of water right here. I always have my little bucket of water and I'm just rubbing that, those bristles on the bottom. And then I get most of the moisture off on the side and then I come in with my, my little paint rag and I'm going to dry off the bristles. It was too much black paint. I thought maybe I could work it in, but it worked out to be too much. So here's my orange again. I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to come to a new world of offload and you can see how much brighter that is, right? It's the real orange. That's what we want, the real deal. But I did want it a little bit different. So I'll just pick up a little bit of that black and add it in there. So it's not like super bright, brand new, bright orange. Okay. Coming into my pumpkins, same thing. Um, my stems I'm gonna do in brown, so I'm not gonna do those, but I am gonna come in, not loving that color. It's still a little bit too dark for me. I'm going right over the ledge, you guys. There's an edge to the truck, to the bed of the truck that goes over the bottom of the pumpkins. And I'm gonna paint that orange and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it. Once I get my stencil off, I'm gonna make that all look like one pumpkin and I'm gonna get rid of that ledge. That's the goal. We'll see, we'll see how successful I am. Um, the ledge is cute. I just, I don't know. I just didn't want it over my pumpkins. You can use the ledge as the bed of the truck, part of the bed of the truck, or you could try what I'm gonna try. Let's see if I'm successful first. <laughs> and then you'll know whether you should try it or not too. I think I can work it out. I think I can make it so that that dis disappears. First thing I'm doing is just getting my pumpkins, the main part of my pumpkins done. I'm using this tiny little brush and I'm going up and down, little up and down motions. Um, some people call it pouncing. I kind of call it, I usually call it stippling. Doesn't matter, just up and down motions. You can see in the pumpkin you, you won't be able to see, but I can see because I'm so close to it. The texture of the board itself, the canvas panel, which I think is really interesting because it gives it like a little beaded look. So I've got all of the pumpkins done, the base of the pumpkins, and I have to do the stems yet. And I think since I already have that metallic and some black sitting here, I'm gonna use those. But first, I'm gonna go back to my brush. I'm gonna rinse it. You could draw in your, you could just draw them in too, your stems, but I really like the shape of the stencil of the stems. So I'm going to do them in metallic. It's going to tie, I'm going to use the same metallic. It's going to tie in all of the colors. I'm just coming into a clean part of the plate, offloading most of it. It's a brownish tone, but it's got the coppery finish. It's going to tie in a little bit of that background. I, I love to coordinate colors and um, things like that so that it, it's going to tie in the background of the this whole piece because I did the duck egg blue and then I used the palette knife to put the metallics. It's going to tie it all together. You can always, always come back in with another paintbrush and make some adjustments. I'm going to pull off the stencil because I need to be able to see my pumpkins to finish because remember I have that ledge there. The ledge is really straight. I'll show you with the stencil. Can you see that line that goes across the bottom of my pumpkins? It's supposed to be part of the bed of the truck 
and I think like a ledge that's holding whatever the contents are in, but I didn't want it there. So I painted it orange. I'm gonna see if I can fix it now because it's gonna look like there's a ledge there. Let's pull this up and see. <laughs> you can see a ledge, all right. All right, so hold on, hold on. I still think I can fix it. Look, you can see it. See the line that's going across? So here's what I'm gonna do. And you can see some of my metallics coming through, but I like the stems being metallic because it ties it all together. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get rid of, see all the lines that are the color of the background that give the, the pumpkin the detail? I'm gonna get rid of those. I'm gonna color in the whole pumpkin with the orange to help get rid of this ledge right here. And then, um, I'll draw those lines in with a different paint color in a minute. So let me grab, I'll rinse my brush off again. I'm gonna grab some of this orange paint that I used back onto my little one. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm going to make most of those lines kind of disappear. And what that's gonna do is make that ledge disappear. Started with the big one. Can you see right here? That's where I'm starting. I wanna get rid of that ledge. So I'm gonna get rid of these lines too. I may need to get more paint out of my paint container, but see what I'm doing? I can kind of still see the lines, but the real goal is to get rid of that ledge and make it disappear. So I'm gonna like really work on the base of my pumpkins and fill them in. Oh, I have a little tiny bleed through right there, but it's okay, it's all good. I need more, I need more orange paint. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Ran out of paint. Okay, there's some more orange. I had a little bit of black got in there, but that's okay because that's the color isn't the like perfect bright orange because I added the black in. So I'm just gonna come around and it's okay if they touch each other. I'm filling in all those lines and I'm gonna add those back in with the detail brush. I'll show you when I'm done. So these are sitting here on top kind of my, and you, you don't have to do this. If you wanna use the ledge, you use the ledge. I painted the ledge the same color as the pumpkins and now I'm just making it fit. I'm making it all one. And then I'm gonna add use a detail brush to add some details back in on my pumpkins if that makes any sense. See what I'm doing? Just stippling up and down, same process, but filling in all those lines. I was hoping by holding it up, you'd be able to see them disappear a little better than the camera angles allowing. I'm trying different things with my camera angles, you guys, just to um, make it a better experience for you, mainly is my goal. So those of you who are regulars, um, especially, I'd love to hear from everybody, but those of you who are regulars, let me know, like, what are your thoughts about there are so many different ways to do this camera angle thing. And I thought I'd try something new so that you could just see me and the project at the same time. A lot of creators do it this way. Even some of our brand ambassadors love, I would love to know what you think. Like, do you like it? What do you prefer the other way? What are your thoughts? Okay. I got my pumpkins in place. I filled in so you cannot see that line. That was the ledge. My, my my truck looks very, very light compared to my pumpkins. Look how light the color is. We'll fix that. We're gonna fix that. Okay, so I've got my base here. I'm gonna do something very funky to my truck um, first, and then we're gonna pull this all together. I still need to do my welcome, and I think I'm gonna do the welcome in the metallic. I, I don't know, you tell me what you think, what color you think I should do the welcome in. But let's get the truck done first because that'll give us a better perspective. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let me put away some of these tools and paints. So I can cover them back up and put them away. This color, the dark brown, I felt like the dark brown was too dark for the truck. This color mineral, although I love it and it really does match the duck egg blue, it's kind of making my truck disappear, but I'm gonna fix that want to see. I'm going to fix it. Let me cover up my paints, like I said, and get them out of the way. Here's what I did. Hold on. Grabbing my, grabbing my supplies. I have this roll of animal print gift wrap. I think it's very thin. I think I got it at Michael's a long time ago. So 
I thought it'd be really fun to make part of my truck animal print. So what I did was I took the stencil and for just parts of my truck, I traced out, and I did this earlier so you wouldn't have to be pained in watching the detail of this, but I took um, parts of the truck and I made little cutouts so that I can Mod Podge them onto my truck so I have a little bit of animal print on my truck. Oh my gosh, I think it's going to be cute. I think, I think. that's My goal is that this is going to be cute. So you can see like this big panel on the truck, I cut out that shape. Okay, you could trace it and then cut it out, but what I did was I laid the paper down, then I laid the stencil on top of it, and I came in with my X-Acto knife, and I went carefully and slowly around the shape to get the shape of the panel of the truck. So, let me grab a little Mod Podge. Those are gonna be so cute. I think it's gonna be super cute, because it's gonna be different, right? It's just gonna add a little different um, look to this. I'm gonna grab, I just need a tiny little paintbrush because I don't need a ton of Mod Podge. I'm gonna actually grab, I usually just grab it from the lid, but that's a little thick. So let me come right in here and grab. I'm gonna grab a little bit of Mod Podge and I'm actually gonna water it down a little. So down here on my craft mat, where's my water? I'm gonna put a little bit of water, just a spritz, and I'm gonna put my Mod Podge in there. So I make like a wash. Um, I find Mod Podge easier to work with if it's not so thick, especially if you have an old big jar of Mod Podge, it gets really thick in the end and we're trying to avoid that. I'm going to put the Mod Podge on the paper so that I don't get it all over my truck because I'm still going to be painting a little bit to jazz up this truck a little. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that Mod Podge wash. It's easier to do if it's laying on the board onto the back of my paper and then I'm going to look at it curled up. <laughs> I'm going to decoupage this on here. Adhere. It's decoupage. It's like a fancy word for glue, right? We're gluing it on here is basically what we're doing. I've got Mod Podge all over my fingers. Very gently. I'm going to lay it down. Oh, I think I'm going to like this, girls. So far. Look! We can make a little animal print. You could do this with any texture. It doesn't have to be animal print, right? And it. I think this is a leopard print. I'm not sure. But... It doesn't have to be this either. Okay, so I have, um, I did part of the front and I did the back, like the main panels of this truck is what I did. Um, so I'm not gonna do that part, the, the rest of the front until I get the back done and then I'm gonna hold it up and we'll look at it and see, do we think it needs more animal print or is it enough? Maybe the three panels that I have planned are enough. Maybe I don't need four panels. So we can we can make our mind up as we go. I do this a lot because I'm so visual. Like, I don't know. I don't know if what I want to do. So I start with my plan, which is to Mod Podge this animal print on. So here's what we got so far. I have not done this one yet. So here's what we got so far. Cute. So I have this panel done. And I haven't decided, I, I think I'm gonna leave that off. But let's get the, this other second, third panel on. Just the tiniest bit of Mod Podge, it's really wet down. My paper is very thin, so it's actually causing my paper to curl up on me, but it's still working out just fine. You're gonna get the, the, the drift, like you get my drift, you get, you get where I'm coming from here, it's gonna work out just fine. Whoops. My Mod Podge dried before I even got it in place. So let's add a little bit to the board. The skinny part is the hardest part. The skinniest part of the, the animal print is the hardest part to get down because it's just so skinny and little. Okay, so this is what I have so far. This is really cute. That's cute. I'm going to add a lot more to this truck. Um, and my pumpkins are gonna get a lot lighter and I'll show you how later. I haven't decided yet. Should I? I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna work with the rest of the truck and we're gonna darken it up and we're gonna lighten those pumpkins up so they work a little better together. They're too, there's too much contrast between the two right now. So we're gonna, we're gonna make this all work. All right, let me get this last Mod Podge part on here. Do you guys see, like this could open up a whole nother world of how to use your stencils, right? Are you loving this or what? 
All right, look it. <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness. All right, now, don't need the Mod Podge anymore. You can top coat, you can clear coat the top of it um, to make sure that that stays down when your project is all done. But right now, what I need to do is get my welcome on here and then I need to get, I'm gonna jazz up, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna jazz up both the um, truck and the pumpkins so that they don't, they look, they're looking a little rough right now. And I know that, so we're gonna fix that in a minute, but I gotta get the word welcome on here. So I gotta grab this other stencil. It's the other half of this stencil that's called, the set is called Fall Vintage Truck Set. If you go out and you decide to purchase it, make sure you use my um, discount code. The company nest, all is one word, no caps, or use my link and you can get a discount, a 10% discount off your order. Okay, I'm gonna put welcome and I'm going to do it in the metallic because I really love that metallic and I think it's really pretty and I think it's really gonna tie things together. So I've got my brush that still has a little bit of the orange paint on it from the pumpkins. I'm gonna use that, well, actually let's go to a new one. I have this one out. I'm just gonna go to that one because I still need to use the other one for my pumpkins. I still may use it. So I'm coming in, there's my metallic. I'm coming in and I'm working that paint into the bristles and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to do the word welcome and it's going to look it's going to really pop with that metallic paint you'll see and it's going to it's going to tie everything together because I already have that metallic paint all over the background of my project oh it's pretty 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 color you guys are always, always welcome to message me or ask questions. I don't always get through all the comments because they're generally with Essential Stencil and you guys are fabulous followers. You're really active, um, lots of conversation, which is fabulous. So if I miss your question and somebody else doesn't answer it, because that's the other thing, we have a lot of regular um, people who stencil on a regular basis helping to answer questions. So if your question doesn't get answered, don't be afraid to message me. I'll do what I can to help. Um, and you're welcome to come over. I'd be honored if you came over to the Comfy Nest and followed and liked my page. Okay, I've got the welcome on there. I'm just gonna use my little hinge method, holding it down with one hand, peeling it back with the other to make sure that we can see it really well. And we can, it's gorgeous. So let's move this over. I'm gonna make you nose. Why is it that my nose is itchy now? Don't they say that means someone's talking about you? Not that I really, uh-oh, don't fall on the floor. Not that I really believe those old wise tales, but look at Oh my gosh, I love the metallic. I love it so much. Okay, let's jazz up this stuff down here. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add some whitewash to the tires, but I'll do that later. And I'm going to use a small brush, like really small, paintbrush, and I'm gonna come in with chocolate brown. The reason being, look at, in general, my truck is a little light compared to the other colors that are going on there. And I have chocolate brown in this um, paper. There's chocolate brown in it. So I'm gonna come in with my paintbrush and a little bit of chocolate brown paint, and I'm going to do some work on the truck let me just get some paint out to so just jazz it up. The lines of the truck are already there, so it's almost like coloring in a little bit. I don't wanna lose the lines of the truck, but I do wanna add like a little bit of dark. So I'm gonna start out by just um, like outlining and see what that does. And I'm not gonna do it like, I'm not going for perfect outlines everywhere. I'm just gonna come in and add some lines with this tiny little paintbrush to the edges of my truck. Okay, like I'll show you here what I mean by that. Cause I'm doing this back fender first. So you'll see what I'm talking about. I usually do this on my paintings and the workshops that I teach. When we do paintings, I usually do this process with black, but since I already have that like, like a dark brown in the paper, I'm just gonna stick with the dark brown and I'm not looking for perfect coverage here. I'm just looking, see how that just makes that pop more? See how this is kind of lost, that fender? That fender's not lost, it's still there, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. And I may even color in a little bit 
of that, the, the color that I used for the base of the truck was mineral. So I may even come in and color that in a little bit, but let me get this part done first. Cause like I said, I make up my mind as I go. I, I do a little and see what it looks like and say, yeah, I, I like the way this is working out so that I can go in and do more of it. So let me get this part done first. The front of the fender of the truck is getting lost. In my lines, you guys, I I am the, the person with the, the least, I have like, my, I do not have a steady hand. This is why I think I'm so bad at hand lettering um, because I don't have a steady hand. So when I do stuff like this, it's best to load up your brush and just make a commitment to a line and go with it. And I don't have a steady hand. So um, if you're looking for perfection, you're not gonna get it with me. Okay, so I did the back fender and the front fender and you can see how much more that pops than the rest of the truck. I'm just enhancing. It's like putting on eyeliner. It's like putting on a little bit of eyeliner. That's all I'm doing. I'm the shape of the truck is already there. I don't have to do that work, but I'm going to outline. I'm going to keep outlining because this is really working out well. The top of the truck, okay, here is one panel and then the top of the truck has a line of paint right above it. You can't see it because it's too thin and the color just matches too well or it's on um, the same tone as the background. So I'm gonna come in and add a dark line above my animal print to make that pop more. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just outlining. I'm just taking every little line that's already there. I need a little more paint. And I'm just coming in and outlining and it is not perfectly straight because I will never be perfectly straight. It's just not me, I don't have it in me. I just don't. This has two lines here. I added a quick two lines. This this is my favorite part of any project that I usually do um, is the outlining part. So don't be afraid of it. I think it adds so much. I'm gonna do the same thing to the pumpkins, but I'm gonna do with the pumpkins, I'm gonna do a bright color. I'm not gonna use a dark color. The pumpkins are already dark. So I'm gonna contrast that with a bright color. Okay, so. Just bear with me as I keep adding these outlines and I keep picking it up so that you can see. It just does, it really does make a big difference. It really makes things pop. This whole back, there's one line of metal frame for the truck um, right here on the back fender. And I like, instead of just doing two outlines, I just filled that whole thing in with brown. It just is really making it come together. Now I have to do the bottom here. There's a line that comes. Doing it upside down. <laughs> it's upside down for me. I'm doing it upside down so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Not straight lines, but it. look at how much more it pops. Now I could come in, you guys. Um, on, I'm gonna do on the fender. So you see how the fender is mostly um, painted with that mineral color. I'm gonna come in with this and now I'm just gonna go along the edges of that shape and add a little more paint and it's gonna add some more color and it's gonna make it look more chunky. So I added just another layer. I'm gonna do the same thing to the front panel here. I'm gonna add just thicker lines just around the edges, filling in a little bit of that bumper with some more of that dark chocolate color in the same shape as the fender. You guys, I get so cheesed about teaching these kinds of things. I have a happy camper painting coming up. Uh, we're doing the happy camper. This is my pink version. <laughs> we're painting this on Sunday. If anybody wants to join us, let me know. I'm um, doing it in the same format. It's in a private group for those people who pay for the workshop. And you can make your, you can make yours any color that you want. I did pink because I, I know I was like, pink, pink campers should be a thing. I think I've never been camping in my life, but I would love a pink camper right? I'm sure some woman out there has painted her camper pink and I bet it's fabulous. Okay, so now I'm doing the same exact process with this dark brown paint to the back, the um, bed of the truck. It does have, even though I covered up some of the, the lip of that bed of the truck, it still does have a ledge here. I covered up part of the ledge but there's still this other ledge down here. So I went in and filled that in, okay? I'm tempted to put more dark brown in this panel right here. I'm gonna just kind of fill that in with a really 
rough fill-in. Oh my gosh, this is so cute, you guys. I'm loving it. Okay, next, pumpkins. Let's do something with these pumpkins. I'm going to outline it with the dark. Then I'm going to come in with white. And I'm going to do something with white. So first, we're trying to coordinate everything. I want everything to coordinate. I'm just going to come in with a rough outline. This is going to make these pumpkins, it's going to differentiate the three of them. So you're going to be able to see where one starts and the next one finishes. I use the same orange on all three of them. And so look at the middle one. I just added a dark outline to the middle one. I'm going to do that to the other ones. So it's just making them distinguish where does one pumpkin end and the other begin. And then I'm going to come in and add some white. But first, let me get this part done. I'm just doing the outside shape right now. And then I'm going to, I'm going to come in and show you some detail here. Hold on, I'm doing the bottoms. I just did like a wiggly line on the bottoms of them. Now, I started on this one and I thought, better not, so I can show you. Those lines that were there um, on the pumpkins that were the background color, I'm gonna come and fill those in with some of this dark brown. We're gonna create those lines, but we're gonna do it with a dark brown. And then I'm gonna come in with white and we're gonna jazz them up a little more. So just creating that depth that disappeared a little bit when I went in. I wanted to get rid of that ledge, so I came in and colored everything <laughs> orange. Okay, I need to brighten them up. I know, I know it's coming, but first let me get all this stuff done. All right. Oh, I'm really excited about this project, you guys. Now, white might be a little too stark. I'm gonna mix a little bit of white with my brown so I have a lighter brown. So I'm gonna take just a dab of white. I do not need a lot of white paint here, you guys. If you can't even see it on there. There's a dab of white right here. And I'm gonna mix that with my chocolate. So I have a lighter brown. So it's not really gonna be white, it's gonna be a lighter brown. I'm gonna need that white for my tires here in a minute. But I just created on here um, a, a brighter color. So. I put that first bit of it right there. So you'll see, I'm just gonna come in and... Same lines, I'm just gonna come in and fill these in a little bit with this lighter color. It's going down in the same direction, I need more of it. Run out. And you guys have seen white pumpkins, right? Pumpkins come in so many colors. There are light orange ones, there are dark orange ones, there are white ones. So they can be all different colors, but you see how it's going to brighten these up a little bit. I even want them a little brighter. I'm going to dry brush them. So I'm going to, this tiny little brush, I'm going to get as much of that paint off as I can. And I'm going to come in and where the dark orange is, I'm going to come in and just dry brush some of this light brown. I'm going to do this first one and then I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see what a difference it makes. So I did this one, have not done these yet. See that? I just dry brushed right on top of that orange. So you guys just play with your paints. Um, once you have some of these techniques down, like in your tool belt, um, then you can start combining the things that you know to get uh, the look that you're going for. So then you're gonna have more dimensional projects. They're gonna be more dimensional. Um, my, I, my paid membership group is called the Craft Therapy Club. And what I like to do in that group is to motivate crafty women to continue to create by teaching them new techniques and giving them a community, um, like a safe and fun community to share their projects and, to, and, and a place to learn where it's like really safe and fun because we're all like-minded people. Um, the doors to that open August 23rd. Um, I'll be accepting new members into that group and anybody who does the camper painting with me, they're gonna get early access to it. Look at that, look at that. It's like makes it look all scratchy, but it matches now what's going on with the truck. I could come in with my truck and do the same thing. Uh, let's grab, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that dark brown. Now I'm still using the same paintbrush, right? I'm gonna grab a little bit of that dark brown. I'm just gonna come along the edges of my paper. 
so that the paper doesn't look so perfect compared to the rest of the project. Now I'm trying to go a little faster so you guys can see everything that I'm doing here. I'm gonna turn on my glue gun. I'm gonna put some jute rope on here in the end. And let's add some rust. So I added some brown paint to the edges of my paper so that my paper doesn't look so darn perfect. And now I'm gonna come in with that metallic that I used. And I'm gonna add a little bit of metallic to the truck so that it looks a little rusty, okay? Um, I don't wanna dry brush that too. I don't want like really dark. I'm gonna add some to the hood. I'm gonna add some to the fenders, like especially around the tires. I still have to do the white on the tires. Don't let me forget that. But where the tires are usually, you see a lot of rust, right? So let's come around those edges and add some rust. It's metallic, but it's gonna look a little rusty now. And because the metallics pick up the light so well, like the sheen, the light, um, when the light hits the metallics, it, it picks up that sheen. I think that's so cool. I'll add a little bit to the, um, the, the, bed of the truck, these, what are they called? I added a little bit up here. So you can see where there's just a little bit of metallic all over the truck. I really like it on the fenders. So I'm gonna add a little more there. And then um, don't be afraid. So usually the bottom of your truck, right, has rust on it. I can add still a little bit to my paper or to where the paper meets, this where the stencil part and the paper meet to kind of tie this all in together on the edges of my doors. I need to not neglect, I'm neglecting this part. I forgot this part up here. So I'm gonna add some rust and some brown in there. So I'm gonna pick up some brown. That's the window, so I don't wanna paint the window that color. Picking up some more metallic. You guys, this is so super cute. Can you see how the light picks up the metallic on the that I put all over the truck? I, it looks like I need a little more. I need more rust up here. A good old fashioned vintage truck with a bunch of rust. It's so cool. All right, let's get some white on those tires and this is gonna be done. Other than I'm gonna hang some jute rope and I'll show you how I do that too. Cause you could do a couple of things. You could punch holes through your, it's like a chipboard almost. You could punch holes through this um, and then hang a jute rope, but I don't, I don't think I wanna punch holes through it. Let me get my white walls done. So the place on the truck in between the black, the two blacks, that's where your white walls would be. And I'm gonna leave them bright white just because they're really popping and they look nice. Now it would be scuffed up, right? So you could add a little black some black lines to that to scuff it up, but I'm not gonna do that. I want it to show up really bright and white to give me that contrast. I love, I love big contrast. See that? And you can see I, my lines are not straight. On a truck, the lines would be perfectly straight. Although on a vintage truck, maybe the tires have warped a little and they're not so straight anymore. Okay, I'd love to know what you guys think of this. Um, I'm going to um, hang on the back of it. I'm going to get some jute rope to hang on the back. So let me grab that. You guys, I have like no room, no room in the inn. There's just no room in my craft room. I'm so scrunched up in here. Okay, I'm going to take regular jute rope. This is what I usually do. Um, I want to make sure that that's dry before I do anything to it. Oh, and you know what? My... Um, Look at the stems of my pumpkins. I want to outline those with that dark brown paint because they're kind of getting lost a little bit. So I'm going to come in with a detail brush. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that dark brown and I'm just going to outline. I have a little bit of brown paint on me. I'm going to outline those stems because they're kind of getting lost. I'll show you here in a second. This, this detail work, you guys, is my favorite. 
if you can't tell, I get so excited. I enjoy it so much. All right, this one's really getting lost because um, there's some metallic from the background competing with it on that last pumpkin, but I think I fixed it. So now you should be able to see those a little better because I added that outline. It's just little. You could do the same thing to the word welcome. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna hang. Um, and I think I'll add a little bit of raffia to this. Now, what I've been doing the last couple of weeks, you guys, I can't guarantee that I'll do it every time, but when I come on Essential Stencils page, they're gonna give away three sets of stencils here when I'm done. On the replay, within 24 hours of the broadcast, they're gonna give away another set of stencils to somebody who comments replay. And then I've been giving away my project in my Crafty Chicks group. So run over onto the Comfy Nest page and um, go ahead and join my free group. It's called the Comfy Nest Crafty Chicks Club. And I will post this in the announcements, a picture of this, um, just to let everybody in there know, because I'm sure they're not here, not all of them are here watching at the same time that you are. But it will let them all know that um, I did the project so they can come back and watch the video if they want to. And then um, I'll give it away to somebody who comments on that on that post inside the Crafty Chicks Club. What I do, I take a piece of jute rope and I tied a double knot here. I don't like really long strings on my um, pieces. I don't like the, you know, this hanger. I don't like it to hang um, really high off the board, right? So I'm going to glue this here and then I'm going to have this one hanging like right there. So I, 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 don't, I just don't like a huge hanger. Um, so that's all I'm telling you here. I'm going to tie this in a knot once and then I want it to be a thick chunky knot because I want that hot glue to hold on to that pretty good. So I'm going to do a second time at the same place so I have a thicker, chunkier knot. Now I'm going to have a lot of extra here. So I'm going to cut this off because I think I'm going to use it. I don't want to smudge this. I'm just making sure it's dry. Flip it around. I am going to glue down in about the same like place on each side of your board. You want to glue this down. Now I use, like I have a plastic knife that I use to push the rope down into the canvas because I do not want to burn my fingers. So just hold it down for a second so it can dry, make sure I'm hanging it on the right place. And then, like I said, in this about the same place on this side, we're gonna do the same thing. Drop a glue, big gob of glue, it's less than dime size. And then I'm gonna push that double knot into that And then let's add a little bit of raffia. I think it would be so cute if we took a little raffia and we created just a little bow to tie onto that. Raffia is so messy to work with, you guys. Are you guys raffia fans? I don't use it a whole lot, but when I use it, I feel like it adds so much to my project. It's got to be the right kind of project, right? And um, we have the right kind of project here with this little, with this little, vintage truck. I, I do, I, I tie the old fashioned way that my oldest brother when I was in first grade taught me to tie my shoes with the two bunny ears. That's the only way I know how to tie a bow or like to tie. It's the only way I know how to tie my shoes still. That's how my kids know how to tie their shoes because that's what my brother Stephen taught me. My brother Stephen is the oldest in my family. I was have um, 12 brothers and sisters and I'm the youngest girl. I have two younger brothers, but when I was in first grade, he was in college. Um, no, actually, he would have been just leaving college, I think. He's the one who taught me how to tie my shoes. I'll never forget it. I felt so accomplished. <laughs> and he was so patient and sweet with me. God love him. All right, so here we have this cute, cute. This is, I'm going to give this away in the Crafty Chicks Club. I think I'm just going to tie this onto here. I think it's going to be so darling. I'm just going to take another piece of this and wrap it around here. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie it around the middle of my little bow so that it's fully attached. And then I'm gonna use like these two, which is what I just tied around my little bow. I'm gonna use those two little um, pieces to tie this to the jute rope. And then it'll just hang over on whatever, you, you can probably flip it on whatever side you want it on your little, on your little project. 
project, so it'll sit right there. Oh my word, I think this is darling. You guys, this is so cute. Giving it away in the Crafty Chicks Club because I can only have so many things in my house. <laughs> But I love it. It's so sweet. I hope you like it just as much. I hope this inspired you. Um, whoever wins this, I will go ahead and put a clear top coat of Mod Podge on top to make sure that your paper stays down. So whoever wins it before you get it, I will do that. And I'll send it to the, in the mail to someone. You are going to go to my Crafty Chicks Club and then just join it. It's a free group. But please answer the three questions I ask. I want to make sure there's no trolls in there. So I want to make sure that like you're a legitimate person who really intends to be in there for good reasons. Um, that's why I ask those questions. Then go to this post will be in the announcements later today. And then you can go ahead and comment on it. And I will give this away to one of the people who comment on it. Okay. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you have a beautiful, blessed weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Um, for those winners whose names have been announced recently, look in the comments. The three winners, all you need to do, the email will be given to you is just email the Essential Stencil folks with your name and mailing address and they will sell you, send you a set of stencils. Um, the replay winner, same thing. Someone within 24 hours of this broadcast finishing, if you comment replay because you caught it later, um, they will send one lucky replay watcher a set of stencils. So you guys have a beautiful, blessed day. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, go ahead and get stenciling. Have some fun. Think outside of the box with your projects. Um, and like I said, I'll catch you next time, next Thursday here on Essential Stencil.